I woke up to Baz calling me. And I thought, okay, this is a moment. I either yeah. have it or I don't. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're discussing how Austin Butler prepared to play Elvis. For me, it was it, it was finding keys, authentic keys, human uh, universal truths. For this video, we'll be looking at this American actor's journey to becoming the king of rock and roll. Do you think Butler did Elvis justice? Let us know in the comments. The success of a musical biopic like Elvis boils down to casting the lead. By July 2019, several high-profile stars were in contention to play Presley, including Ansel Elgort, Harry Styles, Miles Teller, and Aaron Taylor Johnson. Also in contention was a then 27-year-old Austin Butler, who appeared as Tex Watson in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood that same month. Who are you? And who are you here to see, huh? Nobody, sir. We just got lost and a little turned around. Butler started pursuing acting at age 13, popping up in various Nickelodeon and Disney projects. By the time Elvis was greenlit, Butler still wasn't a household name. You play guitar? And sing a little. Really? Because Sam and I have been talking about maybe having live music on the show. Would you want to do a song? Definitely. However, while driving through Griffith Park with then-girlfriend Vanessa Hutchins, Butler felt destined to play Elvis when Blue Christmas came on and he sang along. Quote, you need to play Elvis, Hutchins said. Like, I don't really? know how we get rights or like what we do, but like, this is you your need to play him. It is your calling. Shortly after, Butler caught wind of the Elvis audition. Butler devoured every Elvis song, movie, documentary, and YouTube video he could find to prepare. Reading everything I, I could and talking to as many people as I could and really getting down to who he was as a man, that's, that's what I found really intriguing. Initially, Butler tried recording a cover of Love Me Tender, but it came off as an impression. Like Elvis, Butler was 23 when his mother died, inspiring him to sing Unchained Melody a song about grief rather than romance. If you've experienced that type of grief, you know what that feels like. And it happened to be in this exact same age. Um, there was many of those types of things that I clicked into. When director Baz Luhrmann saw the recording, he compared it to watching a spy cam. Wanting to see more, Luhrmann put Butler through a five-month audition, testing his ability to sing and read lines on the spot. What? It was unlike any audition where it was just five months of it. That's a relationship. <laughs> yeah. For his first screen test, Butler sang That's All Right, Mama, which he thought felt, quote, corny and fake. Working with Lerman and the band, though, Butler found his voice and, like Elvis, became the music. That's all right, no, mama, Although Butler didn't feel confident following his final screen test, he eventually got the call from Lerman. He's very dramatic in the way that he goes yeah. about things, and so he, he, was, he sounded kind of downcast, and he goes, hey, Oh, how Austin, mean. <laughs> I just wanted to be the first one to call you and say, are you ready to fly, Mr. Presley? It didn't hurt that Denzel Washington, who worked with Butler on stage in The Iceman Cometh, called Lerman, recommending Butler for the Elvis role. As rigorous as the audition process proved, Butler's road to becoming Elvis was just beginning. It feels like climbing Mount Everest. It feels like the biggest challenge I could possibly imagine. The most unpredictable hurdle came early in production. Shooting started on January 28, 2020 in Australia. On March 12th, Butler's co-star Tom Hanks and his wife Rita Wilson received positive COVID tests. And ever since being diagnosed, I have been more like America's dad than ever before since no one wants to be around me very long, and I make people uncomfortable. With Hanks in jeopardy, some feared that the film wouldn't happen at all. Thankfully, Hanks and Wilson recovered, but COVID extended far beyond the Elvis set. As the world adjusted to the pandemic, Elvis halted production until September 23rd. Butler didn't take those six months off, however. He'd used that time to train physically and mentally to channel Elvis. While filming was paused, Butler trained three times a week with former Olympic swimmer Ryan Gammon in Miami, emphasizing on getting Elvis's essential hip movements down. Them girls won't see you wiggle. Move, man. Do more. Much more. Butler continued to train while shooting resumed, and in costume, no less. Although the film doesn't explore Elvis's passion for karate, Butler still worked the martial art into his exercise routine. Things just for dexterity of movement and... Um, Yes, we did a lot. He'd undergo karate training daily with his movement coach, Polly Bennett, whose credits include Bohemian Rhapsody and No Time to Die. 
Butler also engaged in swing and tap dancing classes, perfecting Elvis's body language. I felt the difference when it would start to switch in to the music moving me, as opposed to me trying to do a move. Butler collaborated with dialect coaches as well. Butler provided his own singing voice during Elvis's early days. Well, you may go to college, you may go to school. Later in the film, primarily around 1968 and beyond, Butler's vocals were mixed with the real Elvis's. In addition to singing every day with his coaches, Butler strived to get every facet of Elvis's distinctive voice down. I feel like you're talking, you're still Elvis right now. Yeah. <laughs> are you, are you, a, it's is, hard, it, is it hard to you, shake him? Oh, you know, I, I think there's, there's habitual things. When you do one thing for two years, yeah. Yeah. you create habits. Whether walking or falling asleep, Butler constantly had Elvis's music in his ears. Listening to Presley interviews and speeches, Butler made a sound catalog of certain words, studying how he pronounced them. You listen to Elvis speak, and there's these amazing archives out there of every interview he ever gave. And that was the first thing that hit me was, it's not just one voice of Elvis. If Butler sounded even slightly off from the real deal, he'd continue to practice until his voice was identical. Butler also focused on different years, observing how Elvis's voice changed over time along with his body. It's, a, it's like three different characters. Yeah. It's such a great love letter to Elvis and any oh, Elvis fan, dude, ultimate respect. During filming, Butler was given freedom to provide feedback on his own performance. But you're, you gotta be incredibly meticulous and specific to get, you know, I mean, nah, his things. I mean. For example, after watching the first take for Hound Dog, Butler felt he was, quote, doing too much modifying his performance before finally being satisfied. Outside of moving, singing, and talking like Elvis, Butler wanted to get into his head. How do I strip away the superhero Elvis, or the caricature of Elvis, and get to the humanity? Reading books like Elvis and the Colonel, Butler developed a better understanding of Presley's relationship with his mother, father, and manager. Hanks helped Butler get into character, supplying him with a typewriter. Half of the making a movie is the quality of the hang. And we were always kept separated yeah. because of literally the biosecurity uh, requirements of the state of Queensland and Australia. Butler and Hanks wrote messages to each other as Elvis and Colonel Tom Parker, respectively. The two-time Oscar winner also gave Butler some helpful advice, telling him that he should read something every day unrelated to work to maintain his sanity. It was apparent early on that Butler would deliver a dynamite performance, but the most meaningful endorsement came from Presley's real-life family. It's everything. It's beyond words. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, I had no idea how they would feel, and I'm just, I cannot tell you how happy I am. Butler and Lerman traveled to many of the places that shaped Elvis. Going to Graceland, Lerman asked Butler if he'd like to meet Priscilla Presley, Elvis's former wife. And she's so ethereal. It took my breath away. And she, she just looked me in the eyes. And there was something so profound about staring into these eyes that meant so much to Elvis. I, I mean, it gives me chills right now. And then she said, you have a lot of support. His first meeting with Priscilla ended with a big hug and Butler in tears. Likewise, Priscilla, daughter Lisa Marie Presley, and granddaughter Riley Keough got teary-eyed watching the film. Priscilla has repeatedly praised the picture, singling out Butler as, quote, outstanding. Halfway through one private screening, Priscilla turned to talent manager Jerry Schilling, saying, quote, wow, bravo to him. He knew he had big shoes to fill. He was extremely nervous playing this part. I can only imagine. I said, is that Elvis or is that Austin? And he wow. goes, no, that's Elvis. And then I go, Are you sure? And then about a minute later, he goes, that's Austin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's, how, that's how amazing he is. While Elvis has been a breakout role for Butler, his performance didn't come without great sacrifice. Butler essentially went into isolation for two years, spending more time alone with Mr. Presley than with his friends and family. I honestly didn't sleep for about two years, <laughs> and I didn't do anything else for that time, so yeah, that was my life. He threw everything into the emotional demands of the role, but the physical demands came with their own cost. I had to do a lot of rehab because you know I threw my shoulder out at one point, I threw my, my, my knee, uh, popped at one point. Like, there was all these things that I would then have to overcome. <laughs> Even after shooting wrapped, Butler wasn't able to resume life where he left off. The following day at 4 a.m., 
Butler woke up with excruciating pain. At the hospital, it was found that Butler's appendicitis had been affected by a virus. He'd spend a week in bed as a result. Butler's body has since bounced back, but his mind was perhaps the main concern. It was about a week that I was in, that I was bedridden. And then, and then I had about two weeks after where I was pretty sick. Um, but, but yeah, I, <laughs> and then I flew to London to have to film something else and I was just going, I don't know who I am, I don't know what's going on. You know? When you spend years engaged in a project, moving on can be difficult. Butler confided in Lerman and Hanks, fearing that he might sink into depression once Elvis was over. I mean, it was an existential crisis afterwards, you know, like, what is, who am I, what is reality, all that kind of stuff. And Lerman sensed that Butler was searching for a new purpose, suggesting that he, quote, just jump right into something else. Having landed roles in the World War II miniseries Masters of the Air and Dune Part Two, Butler is sure to remain busy in the years to come. I've now had a decent amount of time and I did a, uh, I filmed something else for almost a year and that was sort of my methadone program after. Before jumping back into work though, Butler made another trip to Graceland. Although Butler, quote, felt like an imposter when he initially visited, it now felt like he, quote, was coming home, sensing Elvis's spirit. I didn't feel that the first time I came, I, I, I still had so many questions of, uh, whether or not it was possible and yeah, all those things. And now just being here, it's, it's just, it couldn't mean more to me. The past three years have brought Butler numerous challenges with his blood, sweat, and tears shining through in the final product. The film has been a critical and audience success with Butler's performance being the main source of praise. Vanity Fair says it may uh, well be a star making turn for Austin Butler, and I agree with that. And then this one's my favorite, Entertainment Weekly says, Austin Butler stares down the lens and melts it. Butler has already won Best Actor from the Hollywood Critics Association Mid-Season Film Awards. We'd be shocked if he didn't garner a few more notices when award season kicks into high gear. Lisa Marie Presley wrote, quote, if he doesn't get an Oscar for this, I will eat my own foot. Are you ready to fly? I'm ready. Ready to fly. Elvis never got to act opposite Barbara Streisand, but it's safe to say that a star has been born in Butler. The king lives on through him. He channeled him. He, he put everything he had, his heart, soul, everything he had into researching, and reading, and watching, and learning and he honored him in every way possible. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.